Okay, sorry about that, but we had to make this into two videos. Um, <laughs> long story, but um, uh, instead of me having to edit everything, I'm back in the shack, well, I'm back in the workshop here. I don't know what we call this. This is sort of the extension of the shack. The shack's through that doorway. The other doorway goes to more radios, and this room's a mess. See, I was very controlled then. Okay, so we found in our Yesu spares, have a look at that. UPC 7808H. So, without um, uh, too much uh, time, it uh, well, didn't take too much time, sorry. Um, now, as you can see, I've used a lot of the leg here because of the movement of the side of this, which I think is what's caused the problem. Um, I've actually made it so you can wobble that as much as you want. I've got that those legs so long and so soldered on that they're not going anywhere. And we'll probably even have a look at doing the same bit here to make sure that they don't dry joint. The theory is that I think that 7808, because of that dry joint that was there, it's just arced and it's died. Um, here is one dead 7808. Um, and uh, it's... Um, is what it is. So, I suppose let's first put a receive signal in. I haven't even tried this yet, but I'm, I'm hopeful. Ah, look at that, look at that. Look at that, look at that, that's good news. So, I'm putting an FM signal into it with about five millivolts, so we'll take that down a fair way. 0.5 of a microvolt there. Sorry about that, uh, righto, uh, 0.5 of a microvolt. This is good news. So a missing eight volts to the PLL area was the whole reason that it just wasn't locking. Now, does it transmit? Here we go. One microphone. Okay. Turn that noise off. So we'll go to silence here. What do we got on FM? Let's have a look. One, two, three. It's got a beep on it, hasn't it? I can hear the beep. Okay, that would drive people nuts. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've got eight watts coming out of it. Um, can't hear anything yet, though. So there's no more mic audio. Mic gain's probably down or something. No, no, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, let me just check that. Uh, yep. So we'll have to find out um, why no mic audio. Could be something simple like a mic. Could be a lot of things. Quickest way we can check that. Let's go to sideband and see, does it... Modulate on sideband, one, two. Okay, so so looking a little bit like um, like we've got to turn off this Roger beep. Where is this button that says beep? <laughs> um, Roger beep. Oh, thank goodness. That's better. Um, yeah, okay. So now we've got a radio that's got a PLL functioning. It's receiving. It's transmitting. It's transmitting some carrier at least. Still haven't got mic, mic audio yet. So... I fortunately have my friend's microphone down here. I can just steal for a second. Let's go plug it in. And the good news, one, two, three, four, five. It's a mic problem. Let's go back to FM. And let's go to FM there. Let's have a look what we've got. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two. Okay, so this radio, which was not working, is, um, we'll go and, you know, obviously see if we can peak power for 29 megs. I sort of, I just want this for FM use. I don't actually want to peak it even around 28, 490. I, I mean, it'll cover that area okay, but I just want to make this super lightning hot on 29.6 um, uh, and around that area, uh, certainly for some of the repeaters. Um, one thing I'm not sure of is whether the split actually gives you, see, it's a plus split. And that's a bit of a worry. Oh, I didn't seem to put it anywhere, did it? Uh, a minus split there. Well, it's not really working. All right. I'm going to need to look at that because that split for repeaters, as you probably all know, if I go to, hang on, move this just over a little bit. Uh, we want to go to uh, 620, 640, there's repeaters, 660, there's repeaters. But of course, we want it to go to, to lose 100 kcs, um, which it's, it's not doing at the moment. Um, um, now, some of the problems with uh, these radios, as you saw, they um, have where their range goes, you know, 30, 31, 26, 27, 28, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the issue when you do that, sometimes, and look, I'll have to check this. I, I don't want to quote, be quoted here just yet. But sometimes when you do that, you lose these features. Um, some of the, um, the split features don't work like they used to. So our next job will be converting this back to absolutely standard. So 
for me, I'm happy for it to do 28 to 29.7, and that'll do what this radio needs to do. It doesn't need to do anything outside of it, but it, it does need to do the split uh, for the... Um, uh, for the 100 kc split, it just makes my life real easy working repeaters. And, and what I want to do is have it on a 10 meter vertical and just sit there, you know, on a couple of the repeaters and even our own. We've just put up our own local repeat. Well, when the sorry, the throws are putting up our own local repeater with the uh, uh, Northeast Victorian Amateur Radio Club. And you know, it'd be great to be able to dedicate it to that. So that's the idea. Um, so you can really do a lot with these little radios. Um, we'll get the power up on this, uh, this part of the band. I can almost put money on where the power will be centered at the moment but we'll fix that and uh, she'll be good but there you go um transmits does what it needs to do one two three no oh, hang on sorry <laughs> turn the volume down it doesn't matter that's okay you get the idea uh plus you wouldn't have heard me there either it's not the volume sorry one two three <laughs> i was on 660 not 600 righto but um yeah and hopefully we can get a few more watts out of this just on um uh, 29.6 FM and we'll be pretty happy with it. So there you go, there's an easy fix over two parts to a radio that had no receive, no transmit, very easy to start. I'll tell you who taught me to, to chase voltages. Um, I'd been out of the game, hadn't fixed a thing for a very long time, um, probably you know sort of was wrecking more stuff than I was ever fixing. VK, VK7RX came and stayed with, uh, here for Christmas over a few days and on Christmas night he took me out to the uh, the other workshop that I've got, uh, and he said, right, let's go through some basics about what you do when you change a tyre on a car, and I thought, what is wrong with him? Is You know, he's going mental, but he's right. Check voltages, check, you know, go through and check the obvious things. Stop thinking you know or guessing the fault. So this is where Bob's got me now, going back to the basics, checking lines, checking volts, checking bits, and often it's, it's you know, it's not the glorious I changed the PLL or I found the VCO fault. But I tell you what, it saves you a lot of time when you find out that it's just an 8-volt voltage that's just fit, you know, missing on the side here. 73s, and um, once again, sorry we had to do this in two parts, but uh, just I can't explain to you what happened. I'm, it's, too, it's too long and involved. But I can tell you that um, uh, these sort of faults, um, they're easy to fix. They're not um, hard. So when you get a, a radio that you sort of see is, is not working, you know, just check some volts, check some bits around the place. Um, I could go through a number of things to check. You know, if we hadn't have been there, we'd be in the v PLL VCO. That gets far more complex. That would be a nightmare uh, fault compared to the fault we just fixed. This is a, a two-minute fix if you've got the part. 73s from VK3, Charlie Mike in Tangamba, Northeast Victoria. All the best.